Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about how to calculate the pH when you're doing a strong acid, strong base titration. So first, a real quick review of what a titration is. Basically, it is a method for determining what the concentration of a solution is. And the way you do that is by comparing a measured volume of unknown to a measured amount of known concentration. And if you measure both of those volumes very precisely, you can also determine the concentration of your unknown solution very precisely. So one term that I'm going to be throwing around a bit in this video is the idea of an equivalence point. And the equivalence point is the point in a titration where the number of moles of your unknown that are in your beaker or whatever your flask is, is equal to the number of moles of your known reactant that have been added. To determine the pH of a solution that you are titrating, you need to calculate the H plus concentration. And I know that sounds very obvious. Obviously you need to know H plus concentration to determine pH, but let's think about what the H plus concentration is determined by it would be the moles of H plus divided by volume. That's the definition of molarity. And so in order to calculate our H plus concentration, we really need to think about two different factors. First, how many moles of H plus do we have present in solution? And two, what is the volume of our solution? Now, both of these factors are going to change over the course of the titration and that's why we need to think carefully about both of them. So let's talk about those two factors. And for purposes of this video, I am talking about adding base to an acid solution. You don't have to titrate that way. You could also add acid to a base solution. And we will talk later about how that would work in terms of calculation. But for now, we're just talking about adding base to an acid solution. When you have an acid solution, obviously you start with some number of moles of H plus, but as you add base to it, some of that acid is going to be neutralized. The H plus will react with the OH minus in the base to form water. And so the more base you add, the more number of moles of H plus get neutralized. And so over the course of a titration, the number of moles of H plus present will decrease. At the same time, the volume of your solution is increasing. So you start with a fixed volume of unknown solution, let's say 20 or 25 mils. But then as you add base, that base is in solution. So it also contains water. And so the volume that's in your flask is naturally going to increase. So as the titration goes on, not only are the moles of H plus decreasing, but the volume is increasing, and since we're dividing by volume, that makes the H plus concentration smaller. So in two ways, the H plus concentration is naturally going to decrease, and therefore pH will increase, become more basic, as the titration progresses. So that's a quick qualitative overview of how pH changes. So let's talk about how to determine the number of moles of H plus we have. You can calculate the number of moles of acid you started with if you know the concentration and all of the moles of acid you started with contribute to your starting pH. But as you go along, you're going to be adding a number of moles of base and that's going to be neutralizing some of those moles of acid. So if you do a comparison of the number of moles of base you've added to the number of moles of acid you started with, you'll see that there's some number of moles of acid that are left, and that is going to be equal to the number of moles of acid we started with minus the number of moles of base that were added. Now, how about the volume? Remember, we started by putting a known volume of our acid solution in before we started titrating. And then over time, you've been adding base and you should know exactly how much base you've added if you're doing your titration right. So you can add those together to figure out the total volume in your flask. So when we're calculating pH changes, 
the first thing you're going to do is calculate the number of moles of acid you started with. And that's just going to be molarity of acid times the volume of acid in liters. Because remember, molarity is moles per liter. So multiplying by liters gives us moles. Then we're going to calculate the moles of base. And we're going to do that the same way. Molarity times volume of base. Again, it has to be in liters. And don't forget that because we almost always measure these things in milliliters. So you're going to have to convert. Step three is to calculate how many moles of H plus we have left. And we're just going to subtract the number of moles of base we added, number two, from the number of moles of acid we started with, number one. So it's going to be number one minus number two. Then we'll calculate the volume, adding the volume we started with plus the volume of base we've added since we started. And then we're going to calculate, first of all, the H plus concentration, which is moles divided by volume, number three divided by number four, and our pH, which will be the negative log of H plus. So I'm going to do two calculations, and they're pretty quick. We are doing a titration where we're titrating 0.4 molar HCl. We're going to put 10 mils in a beaker. We're going to titrate it with 0.2 molar NaOH. And if you do the math, how many mils of NaOH do we need to add to reach our equivalence point where there's an equal number of moles of HCl and NaOH, the answer is going to be 20 mils. And if you're not sure how I got that number, let's talk about it in class. Let's calculate the pH when you've added 10 mils of base. So that would be halfway to our equivalence point. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is calculate the number of moles of acid we start with. That's gonna be our molarity, 0.400 moles, times the number of liters it's 10 mils, so that's 0 0.010 liters. You should have a small fraction of a liter or else you did your calculation wrong. Anyway, that gives us basically four millimoles, 0 0.004 moles. Now I've taken that number for the starting moles of acid and I've stuck it up under the original problem because we're collecting all these numbers that we're gonna use later. Our second step is to calculate the moles of base added, which is again gonna be molarity times volume. So the moles of base is gonna be the molarity of our base, 0 0.200 molar, times the volume of base that we've added, which at this point is 10 milliliters. So it's 0 0.010 liters. That gives us two millimoles, 0 0.002 moles. All right, again, I've stored that for later. So the third step is to calculate the number of moles of H plus we have left in our flask. So we're gonna take the number of moles of acid we started with and subtract the number of moles of base we've added. And so that's gonna be 0 0.004 minus 0 0.002 moles, which is 0 0.002 moles. So that's how many moles of H plus there are left in our flask. And now let's calculate the volume. We are gonna do this by adding our starting volume and the volume that we've added. We started with 10 mils, we've added 10 mils, and again, we're doing this in liters, so that's 0 0.010 liters for each of those. So our current volume is 0 0.020 liters. Finally, we're gonna calculate H plus by dividing the number of moles of H plus left by the volume. So that's gonna be 0 0.002 moles divided by 0 0.020 liters, and it's gonna give us a molarity of 0 0.100 molar. Now for pH, we're just gonna do the negative log of that molarity, and that gives us a pH of one. So even after adding a bunch of base, this is still pretty acidic. Next, we're gonna calculate the pH after we've added 19 mils of base. Now, remember that we expected the equivalence point to be at 20 mils. So we're getting really close to our equivalence point. We're one mil off. So we should have much, much less H plus left at the equivalence point. Basically, you've added enough NaOH to neutralize all of the H plus. So at the equivalence point, you should have no H plus left. So this should be less acidic. Step one says calculate the starting moles of acid, but we already did that. So I'm going to skip it. And that's the nice thing about doing this is that once you calculate the starting moles of acid, if you're doing multiple calculations for the same titration, that calculation is just done. You don't have to redo it every time. So let's start by calculating the moles of base we've added after adding 19 mils. So the number of moles of base is gonna be our molarity of base times the volume of base that we've added, which is now 0 0.019 liters. So now we have 0 0.0038 moles. 
So when we calculate the number of moles of H plus that are left, it's going to be 0 0.004 moles minus 0 0.0038 moles, which is going to give us basically 2 times 10 to the minus fourth moles. So that's much less than we had before. Now we'll calculate the volume we have. Again, starting plus what we added. So that's going to be 0 0.01 liters plus 0 0.019 liters is going to be 0 0.029 liters, 29 mils, right? And now let's calculate our H plus. Our H plus concentration is going to be 2 times 10 to the minus fourth moles divided by 0 0.029 liters, which gives us a concentration of 0 0.00689 molar, which is considerably smaller than what we had before. Remember, last time we had 0.1 molar. So our pH is going to be the negative log of that, which is 2.16. Now that's still pretty acidic. So what if we were to go through and calculate a whole bunch of different points in this titration? What would it look like? I've made a graph here, and you'll notice that along the x-axis, I'm graphing how many mils of base I've added to the system. And on the y-axis, I've graphed pH. So in this first shot we have, you can see that all the way up till 15 mils, the pH is gradually increasing, but it's doing so fairly slowly and also not completely linearly, but, but mostly linear. Now, as we get closer to the equivalence point, it starts to curve up, so the pH is changing more quickly. So this point right here was what we calculated at 19 mils, just above pH of two, but you could see that you know, as we get closer and get to like 19.5, it's going up. And then as we get to 19.9, it's three something, 19.95. I can't remember what numbers I put in. It's close to five, but you can see it's almost vertical as we approach the equivalence point. So the pH changes extremely rapidly. And when we reach the equivalence point right at 20 mils, the pH is seven, so it's exactly neutral. Now let's think about what will happen after the equivalence point. So if we keep on adding base after the equivalence point, there's no more H plus to neutralize. So if you compare the moles of acid you started with to the moles of base you added, you've already added more than enough moles of base to neutralize the acid. And then there's a certain number of moles of base that are left over. And those are what's gonna dominate the pH. So now you're gonna have a basic pH that's dominated by these excess moles of base that you have added. So you're gonna do a similar sort of calculation. You're gonna calculate the moles of base that you've added so far, calculate the initial moles of acid if you haven't already done that, although we have for our particular titration that we're doing in this video. You'll use that to calculate the moles of OH minus that are left in solution. So that's gonna be the number of moles of base minus the number of moles of acid you started with. Then you're gonna calculate how much sample you have, same way we did before, and then calculate the OH minus concentration, the moles of OH you got from number three, divided by the volume from number four. Once you have that, you can calculate the POH, and then you can use the POH to calculate the pH. So we're gonna do one point there, same titration, but now we've added 20.5 mils of base, so we're a little past the equivalence point. So let's calculate how many moles of base we've added. Same way we've been doing before, the moles of base are going to be equal to the molarity of base, 0.2 as usual, and then we've added 20.5 mils, which is 0 0.0205 liters, and that gives us 0 0.00410 moles. Our starting moles of acid are the same, and now we're gonna calculate the moles of OH minus left over. So it's gonna be 0 0.00410 moles minus 0 0.00400 moles. So we basically have one times 10 to the minus fourth moles left. And now we calculate the volume, which is just gonna be 10 mils plus 20.5 mils, basically 0 0.0305 liters. And now we can calculate our OH minus concentration. So that's gonna be one times 10 to the minus fourth moles divided by 0 0.0305 liters. And that's gonna be 0 0.00328 molar. POH is gonna be the negative log of that, which is gonna be 2.48. And now we can take that and use it to calculate pH. That's gonna be 14 minus 2.48 
which is going to be 11.52. So we're only half a mil past the equivalence point, but you can see we're already pretty basic. So let's go ahead and I calculated a whole bunch of points after the equivalence point. Let's add those to our graph. And you can see that after the equivalence point right here, the graph continues to go up steeply until it's well past 10, and then it starts leveling off. So calculating the pH for a strong acid, strong base titration basically comes down to fairly simple solution-based or stoichiometric relationships. But that's a strong acid, strong base titration. How would it change if we were adding a strong acid to a strong base? Well, we just sort of flip things around, and so the sorts of calculations we did after our equivalence point before, we would do before the equivalence point, seeing how much OH- was left, and then after the equivalence point in this titration, we'd be looking at how much H plus was left in the solution. And so it's just sort of flipped on end, but follows the same principles. In the next video, we're going to talk about what happens when you have a weak acid strong base titration. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you again soon.